What's good kings and queens? Hope everyone's July is starting off right. This week's video is on the granite chins of boxing. So pretty much chins of fighters that can withstand numerous clean power punches from notable punchers. With that being said, let's start the video. To start the list off, Danny Garcia has an amazingly underrated chin that has consistently held up over the years. He had proved that early against hard-punching junior welterweight Kendall Holt when no one knew who Danny was. Was briefly stunned against Zab Judah and recovered quickly. Zab proved to be tough. Left hand by Judah, there's the right hand. Storming here. And shook by left hand. Nice right hook. There's a right hand. Judah trying to throw it was not phased at all by Lucas Matisse, who was blasting through guys around that time, creating this boogeyman aura around him. The mouth guard and Danny Garcia just popped out with that ferocious right hand, and Garcia took it as things stop, heat up stop, here stop, at the stop, beginning stop, of the championship stop, round. Stop. Yeah, yeah. Taking all of a prime Keith Thurman's best shots, then to top it off, to take everything Arrow Spence Jr. had to offer and go 12 rounds with him. Definitely one of the best chins of the past 10 years in boxing. Tapia has faced so many hitters in his career, so many technical boxers that has the power to get the knockout, and he stood up to them all. From super flyweight to bantamweight, he was unstoppable. Danny Romeo Jr. had 30 wins, 27 knockouts. And Tapia went toe to toe with this guy, took all of his best punches, turning this into a classic. Nana Kanundu, one of the hardest punchers at Bantamweight at the time, didn't even phase Tapia. Tapia was knocked down in the 11th round, but that was more of a slip, and the only punches thrown was to the body in the back. Can't be a knockdown, was it? Knockdown. Knockdown. That can't Five. be a knockdown. Are you crazy? Oh my goodness. Seven. Are you crazy? Tapia that is in stunned uh, disbelief. Are you crazy? I'm sorry, John. That was a knockdown, brother. Oh, Come on, let's uh, all the way to the end of Tapia's career where he faced Marco Antonio Barrera at his peak. He couldn't be shaken or put away. One of the greatest chins of the lower weight classes and most certainly one of the most toughest, grittiest to ever do it. De La Hoya, pound for pound, has faced so many punchers from lightweight all the way to junior middleweight. Jorge Paez, Rafael Ruelas, Miguel Angel Gonzalez, Ike Corte, who had 8 knockouts out of his last 10 fights. Tito Trinidad, who was overpowered at welterweight. Shane Mosley, who had a crazy mixture of power and speed. 34 wins with 32 by knockout. And not to forget Fernando Vargas and Ricardo Mayorga, who was still dangerous at that time. Which De La Hoya fought him after a type of loss that would ruin anyone mentally due to the aftermath from it. Though Margarito is one of the most hated people in boxing, he certainly has one of the best chins in the past 20 years of the sport, taking an immense amount of punishment just to land a couple of shots. With all that said, moving on to the next guy since I have nothing to show here. Despite the loss to Junior Jones, which was more of a result to a perfect punch, a punch that is wonderfully timed landed at the right place. No one's getting up from that. Outside of that loss, Barrera has shown that he has one of the greatest chins in boxing, proving that in his rivalry against Morales. His fight against Nassim Hamed, Manny Pacquiao, and one of the hardest punchers in featherweight outside of Hamed, Kevin Kelly. Kelly may have been a bit up in age when they fought, but the power is the last thing to go out in a fighter, and Kelly still had plenty of it. Kelly would land a Hail Mary shot on Barrera in the fourth round. Barrera would be completely unfazed, then drop Kelly shortly after. Barrera took everything that Khan threw at him, and this wasn't any kind of Amir Khan. This was a peak Amir Khan with Freddie Roach as trainer and Alex Ariza as a strength coach. I think the biggest issue in that fight was the bad cut over the forehead of Barrera. With Khan swamping Barrera every chance he got, blinded by the cut, Barrera never had a chance to really set up an offense, but was not hurt by Khan's attack. This was definitely one of the fights I was really intrigued how it would have went if Barrera was never cut and the fight was able to go past the 6th round. Despite Canelo's career not yet ending, in 63 fights he's never been reportedly knocked down. 
officially come close to knocking Canelo down was Miguel Cotto's brother, Jose Miguel Cotto, in 2010. Canelo at that time was 19 years of age. Jose only had one loss and a draw at the time. Both loss and draw were in title fights. This was Canelo's biggest step up in competition. Kermit Centron would then be the next biggest puncher Canelo has faced. I'm skipping over Shane Mosley because he's not particularly a power puncher at 154 against real junior middleweights. I don't think Canelo really took anything flush from Angulo, who has crazy power, but his Achilles heel is being incredibly slow, and that's not an overstatement. So a guy like Angulo, and later James Kirkland, who also possesses just as slow hands, is an incredibly bad style matchup, as they will not land anything flush on a guy like Canelo. I think Canelo's chin was truly tested against Golovkin. The shots that Golovkin was landing would have put anybody away. Golovkin can put you away when blocking Talking, glancing, and forget about it being flush. He landed that variety on Canelo. Jacobs is another fighter I would say is a big puncher at middleweight, especially when he gets you clean. Canelo ate Jacobs' best punch, flush. Despite how competitive a contest it was between Kovalev and Canelo, Kovalev seemed reluctant to overcommit and throw anything with power. He was really trying to use all his finesse and box, which he was having quite a bit of success till he hit the wall very suddenly in the 11th round. With the Beevil fight, you can say Canelo's chin was certainly tested, because Beevil is an in his prime light heavyweight, a real size light heavyweight. This fight had no rehydration claws. Canelo, who is the undisputed champ at super middleweight, certainly going to put on the extra weight in a fashion he can easily lose so he can make 168 with ease. Since there's no rehydration claws, Beevil is free to put on as whatever is suiting for him. As Eddie Hearn had claimed to Fight Hub TV, that he will be rehydrating to 190 to 195. It's sort of crazy reading this article here a day before the fight because anyone reading this would have had high doubts Canelo would win and put their money on Beevil. When it's all said and done and Canelo retires, he will go down having one of the greatest chins in boxing. Can't mention Canelo without mentioning Golovkin. You really have to fast forward in Golovkin's career all the way to the Rosado fight. Rosado is not that much of a power puncher, but he's a sharp puncher. And that Golovkin who fought Rosado had the flu. Curtis Stevens before 2013 was fighting all over the place, from super middleweight all the way to light heavyweight, knocking fighters out. He had a reputation for his power, and this was Golovkin's biggest test. After the memed knockdown, Stevens was able to recover and really mount up a rally on Canelo showing off Gennady's chin before Gennady got him out of there. Daniel Gill lands a perfect loaded shot on Gennady, while Gennady throws his shot late from an awkward trajectory to knock Gill out. Crazy display of power and a chin. As much power David Lemieux has, unfortunately I, I can't even use him as an example because he didn't land anything flush on Golovkin. In heavyweight, anybody can get knocked down, but it's how those who get knocked down get back up. Briggs has taken punches from the biggest of his era to really cement how good his chin is, his fight with Vitaly Klitschko. Briggs became one of the very few fighters to go to distance against Klitschko, and it was a very painful distance. At a certain point in the fight, you're just thinking, what was the actual goal here? When Klitschko retired out of his 45 wins, only four fighters ever went to distance. Timo Hoffman in 2000, who gets a shout out as he was in there trying to win it, fighting in the pocket and pressuring Vitaly. Kevin Johnson in 2009, who fought defensively from the opening bell, fought to survive, becoming the second man ever. The following year, Shannon Briggs in 2010, and lastly, Derek Chisora. Ali took shots of the greatest punchers from his era. Not only from his era, but they're in the all-time heavyweight ranks. That was one thing Henry Cooper could do. He had a vicious left hook. Despite being knocked down, he has never been knocked out. Debatably, the greatest chin in heavyweight boxing history. Love him, hate him, easily one of the greatest chins of all time. He has been stunned a couple times in his career. 
possibly against Vargas, very briefly against Victoriano Sosa towards the end of the fifth round, famously against Demarcus Corley. Judah was able to get some good shots in. Oscar De La Hoya in the 11th and 12th round, landing flush on Floyd. His most effective punch in three rounds. Floyd going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Oscar in the final 10 seconds. Oscar getting the far better of the exchanges, which you can see he was loading up on them, trying to get the knockdown. The Shane Mosley fight truly showing Floyd's chin. Somehow, he was not dropped by the first big shot. And the second shot, any other fighter would have dropped like a sack of potatoes. Floyd managed to stay up and weather the storm. Ortiz did get some in before he decided to throw away the fight. Miguel Cotto really landed a hard variety of shots on Floyd. Maidana with a massive weight advantage. Floyd only came in 2-3 pounds what he weighed in at. Maidana was at 165 pounds. Floyd took the shots that took down Adrian Broner months prior. Even in the rematch, Floyd got cracked by Maidana, which would be the last effective shot he threw of his career at the end of the round. It buckled Floyd, and he seemed to be walking awfully strange. Was he actually stunned by that? Won't know till the documentary is released, probably 10 to 15 years from now. Floyd has been knocked down once in his career, but it was due to him breaking his fists on Carlos Hernandez's head. An added note, many would mix up Floyd in his career timeline that he had this incident with his hands, thus ruining his punching power post Gaddy fight. The Carlos Hernandez fight was the fight that Floyd ruined his fist in, and that was way before Gaddy. Did it affect his punching power? No, but it did affect how he would selectively choose to load up on his shots. I don't really have to explain it all too much. Pound for pound, he has an all-time great chin, 90 fights into his career, and Frankie Randall was the first to ever put him down. De La Hoya with his speed and power couldn't drop him. Costa Zhu, one of the hardest punchers in junior welterweight history, was able to knock him down, but not out, as the fight ended with Chavez on his feet. Hagler took all of Thomas Hearn's best punches, Mugabe, and he was only knocked down once in his career, that being against Juan Roldan, which it wasn't even a real knockdown. It grazed Hagler's back and his glove pushed Hagler down to the canvas, the ref counting it as a knockdown. Outside of that, he has been bulletproof his entire career. You can't have a list like this without mentioning James Tony. James Tony would only get knocked down three times in his career. At middleweight, Reggie Johnson in 1991, which Tony did look stunned. At super middleweight against Roy Jones Jr. in 94, which was more of a flash knockdown mixed with balance. And lastly, at heavyweight against Sam Peter in 2007, which was more due to bad balance. Tony has rarely ever been stunned in his career. Reggie Johnson to once note again, debatably Evander Holyfield. And against Sam Peter. If you've seen him stunned outside of those fights, please chime in. Sam Peter, who was a massive puncher at that time, the blows that Sam Peter was landing on Tony were the same blows that left Klitschko on the canvas, and Tony remained planted throughout all of that. There's that right hand, and that stunned James Tony. James Tony early is right. And on top of that, this is the Granite Chins of Boxing Volume 1. For more videos like these, be sure to like, share, and if you're new, subscribe. Subscribe to the Patreon for patron back projects and early access. This project being on the tale of Floyd Mayweather versus Ricky Hatton. I'm Olfa Sancho, and I'm out.